Welcome, welcome, welcome to A Foreign Story. We're here on site at Bob Fernal's home, a pivotal cornerstone of the Alpha America community. We're gonna see some hidden gems. We're gonna get a chance to hear his story. I'm bringing you along with me. Let's go. No more swimming in the deep end No life that's so I drown Committed to love This time I really ain't messing around You might want me, yeah I'm out of your cool The stakes are too high I got too much to lose, I'll be your fool I'm still dealing with the consequences Really drown my last commitment Welcome, welcome, welcome back to A Foreign Story. As promised, I have a very special guest here. Been looking forward to this since I moved to Austin, actually. Uh, been about a year. Uh, Mr. Bob Fernald, a legendary staple in the American Afro Romeo community. We want to make sure we got his story on tape today. Uh, Mr. Bob Fernald. Well, thank you very much, Corey. It's uh, kind of a surprise and yet uh, very happy that someone is interested in saying something because <laughs> I do feel like uh, I have lived kind of a charmed life and I'd like uh, to be able to tell it because it is it is cool. I would agree. Uh, so just a little background on how Mr. Fernal met. Uh, my first ever official Alfa Romeo meeting was uh, Formula One and uh, I was the only one there. I didn't know anyone. Uh, Mr. Vernal came up and welcomed me with, with open arms. Little did I know he would be the primary reason that majority of the people had gathered there. Um, and he was honored that night um, for his contribution to the Alpha Romeo community. Um, once I heard that story, I felt that the world should know about it. Um, Alpha Romeo in itself stems from Italy, but has a very uh, unique history in America, and he's one of the pioneering reasons uh, behind that. Would you agree? Um, it, you know, I, I, I feel like it is certainly a privilege to be living in Austin, and I'd like to think that my 50 years here have made the Alfa Romeo brand um, stand out, which translates to the current Alfa dealership in Austin, Texas, is the largest selling Alfa Romeo dealer in the United States. Now, that's, I can't take a lot of credit for that, but I feel like I have maintained the momentum from the early years, which I got here in 1970, and dragging Alfa Romeos behind me from Houston and working on Alfa Romeos. The first car I worked on was a Volkswagen, <laughs> but you have to start somewhere. So <laughs> don't I, tell those Porsche guys that. And then and then worked my way into what was Zap, Z A P, mm -hmm. Zephyr Auto Paddock at the time. That was in 1970. Um, it was later, uh, as more Alpha showed up, Zephyr Alpha Pata. So it was still Zap, Z-A-P. And um, that was the beginning. And in 1980, I was offered the dealership. Uh, so I became the Alpha dealer, um, which was, I'd never in my wildest dreams thought you know, I'm actually going to sell brand new Alphas. And the contact was beautiful because we uh, were able to 
sell a good number of cars. We were as high as the fourth largest dealer in the United States in this little city of, at the time, 250, 300,000 people in Austin. But now um, it's over a million. So we're, I hate the place now, <laughs> but uh, it's still the best place in Texas to live. So I would agree. Um, there's really no reason not to enjoy Austin, even in its uh, heyday. But um, so as the dealership, which became Alpha of Austin, um, I did that uh, for eight years uh, as a dealer. And then I sold out to someone who gave me too much money and uh, went to work for them at Texas Auto Sports for three years and then decided that I wanted to get back to my own operation. So I, uh, I quit working for the Alpha dealership at that time and opened my shop, which was called uh, Italian Motor Service. And that was in 19... 80, no, 1991, and maintained that for about 12 years, and uh, then decided to more or less retire and do restorations. Okay. So it was a it was a true labor of of love because I couldn't imagine being doing anything else that would be more fun than buying, selling, working on, and palling around with all of these wonderful people in Alfa Romeos. So it's it, the, 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 the dealership and the shop uh, that came along afterwards caused my huge, I consider, huge numbers of friends, very dear friends. Mm -hmm. And they all seem to go back to the original point of Alfa Romeo. So I feel very, very fortunate to have these friends who have followed me and been around me and we have, have uh, socialized and tripped together around the country and for the past uh, 50 years and um, loving every minute of it and think it's going to go on forever, but it is 2020. And I am 80 years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so things will come to an end, but hopefully not for another 20 or 30 years. I mean, my dad lived to 102, so that's kind of my benchmark. <laughs> he kind of outdo today. Yeah, I was, I was hoping I could do that. <laughs> and certainly as, as, as well as he survived it, too. That's, that's, that, that's perfect. Um, just to give the viewers a little uh, segue of kind of the history of filling in the gaps there. Um, we had what year did Alpha actually exit the United States? Well, uh, 94, uh, 95 was when they actually left the United States. They, at that point, we were selling no nothing but the 164 and the Alpha Spider. Okay. And um, they were old hat in the new modern car world. So, they did not import the cars into America after that that were being sold in Italy. Okay. So those cars were uh, more or less Fiat owned and uh, manufacturing techniques done by Fiat. So there's a serious break in the way that, that Alphas were considered prior to 95 and post 95. Okay. So um, we're so, so lucky to have Alpha back in the market uh, with the coolest cars on the planet mm -hmm. and the fastest cars on the I planet. Agree. I agree. <laughs> the, uh, the Alpha uh, Julia Quad that uh, was the, it's currently the champion at the Nuremberg ring as far as lap times, which wouldn't seem like much to most people, but Porsche spent one and a half million dollars after Alpha went out and set the, the number. Porsche was spent a, a 
one and a half million dollars to try and take that number back and didn't do it. So as a four-door Alpha sedan, uh, the achievement of the fastest lap of the Nuremberg Ring is an achievement that we may not see again. And um, it's, it's a source of pride and a, a heck of a way to bring back the mark. Yes. Um, and the Julia, which I consider more um, a a car more attuned to your everyday driving would be the Julia Julia TI uh, with the four cylinder, which uh, turbocharged is a fantastic automobile. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a Quadrifoglio, which is 505 horsepower, the 290 horsepower Julia TI is an incredible car. Yeah. And of course the 4C, which is the uh, the coolest looking car out there, <laughs> and a lot of fun to drive, but it's really hard to get out of. Because <laughs> it is a small, low to the ground car, it is. but a heck of a project. It's a very nice car. Uh, so we wanted to Again, I really thank you for, for allowing us into your home. Uh, the whole purpose, again, was to bridge the gap. So, myself, Bob, is 80 years old. I'm 30 years old. I wasn't born when Alpha exited um, or was in diapers when Alpha exited. So, uh, But I am an owner of the newer Alpha Romeos. And so we want to kind of bridge that gap to be able to make sure that his legacy and the work that he has done um, doesn't fall to the wayside and I can pick that baton up and run with uh, with the knowledge that Bob has. We don't know where we come from. We're do doomed to repeat the same history. And under my watch, <laughs> and Bob's watch, for the next 20 years, we want to make sure the Alpha stays in this country and, and stay uh, afloat uh, and making some really, really nice cards as much as we possibly can. So, difficult question here. Two alphas, you had to choose. Which would they be, Mr. Brown? Well, pie in the sky, money no object. This is the car that I would uh, endeavor to own, of which they only made a total of 40 of these cars. And I have a book which in, uh, describes and, and goes into depth of each of the cars. It is an Alfa Romeo 8C2900 uh, uh, Lunga, L-U-N-G-A I believe is how they say that. And it is an eight cylinder inline twin cam aluminum engine with uh, uh, superchargers and carburetors and a transaxle and is considered to be the most valuable pre-war automobile on the planet. Now, that being said, it's not necessarily still that way, but at the time of the person speaking that said that, it was the finest car. And the one that I'm holding was bought for $10 million as a real car, and they have gone up in price since then. Uh, we see them both in race car trim and in what we call uh, um, Stradale trim. And so this car is um, approximately 260 horsepower out of three liters pre-war and it's just a uh, sensational automobile. The quality of these things, the Concours uh, judging of these things is just phenomenal. And so this would of course be my number one choice. This car is the car that I really, I had the car in my possession for a long time and it's a great story. Um, and I would endeavor to own another one, but they've gone out of sight and price because I sold mine for thirty thousand. I paid two hundred for it out of the junkyard. But uh, in 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 carrying it around with me, it escalated in value to such a point 
that it really became um, a, a valuable car. I didn't expect it at the time. I thought, well, it's just another Alpha, and yet it was so pretty I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. So I did have this car for quite some time, and did sell it in '89. Went to Europe, and it uh, is something that I would love to have another one, but they're now, as with everything, too expensive. Too expensive. They're worth too much money. Too expensive. You guys just heard it first from Bob Fernal, the history of Alfa Romeo and the part in which he played. Now we're gonna go back and take a sneak peek into his special garage and restorations. Come on, I'm gonna bring you with me. Oh, Mr. Fernal, you. Look at you, you know where I'm going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is one of Guido's cars. Oh, oh with that green super out Oh, front. Guido. You look at you. <laughs> uh, for the viewers, if you don't know, this is my fav favorite. I wish alpha. it was clean. <laughs> uh, favorite alpha. Period. Uh, I'm speechless. Uh, my first time ever actually seeing one in person. Uh, I search them online. I search them on Bring a Trailer. I search them on all these these other forms, but it does not disappoint. Uh, this is well. It's a Bertoni design from '64 through '74 in America. They were produced and sold, and um, the biggest, probably the biggest number of cars sold were these cars uh, back in the in those days, in the late '60s, early '70s. So, what, what are your plans for this one, Mr. Fanal? Well, it's going back to Guido, okay. uh, and it's for sale. Okay, it's a car he bought. Um, it's been sitting outside. Uh, now for uh, all of the uh, virus time mm -hmm. and so uh, I just put it in I took the Lancia that was there and moved it over to Guido's okay. and I'm going to finish working on this car which it doesn't need very much but it, it it's a really good sound car and uh, hopefully it'll uh, end up selling he's got a rather neat collection of cars that um, uh, Guido is a story all in himself. What would something like this go for, Mr. Guido? Well, anywhere from uh, twenty-five to fifty thousand. Okay. Um, we're seeing some of these really, really nice ones selling for as much as seventy-five thousand. Seventy-five thousand. That's what I was saying. I was saying seventy-five thousand. But that's a that's a car with no issues whatsoever. Okay. Usually a total restoration or a complete never been a damaged okay. car, okay. original car. Because I was seeing some red um, Arosa um, that went for 75, 68, and then I've seen some go for high 80s um, recently, yeah. as in the last, uh, before the corona pandemic. We just sold a blue one for 55,000 that went to Houston, and that was a car that I restored. This is amazing, so uh, again, for you, you all that don't know, uh, the show and Mr. Fernald and, and, and the whole team were based off of uh, one, passion for foreign cars, two, passion for Alfa Romeo, uh, three, the restorations and the work behind um, getting beautiful cars like this back on the road and to show condition and, and, and to tell these stories of cars like this that, that you would not ever <laughs> ever see in person um, until you find someone like Mr. Fernal who is a pioneer uh, and a, a cornerstone in a community like this. This is again my first time ever seeing a GTV uh, actually in person um, and in, in such amazing condition. There's not a crack in the leather seats. Are the doors open Mr. Fernal? Yeah. yeah. There's not a crack in the leather seats. As you can see, wood a, a steel. A unique wheel. item on this car that is something we never see in Austin is the dash is not cracked. Mm -hmm. 
and they're always crowded. But this car did come from northern states. Amazing condition. Floor boards. Mr. Mr. Fernandez, this is a four speed? Yeah, five speed. Five speed, five speed? Yeah. Twin cam, all aluminum, 2000 cc, fuel injected, uh, five speed, four wheel disc brakes, limited slip rear end, all standard equipment. Yeah, we're gonna get some shots of this. Again, it's not finished. It definitely needs uh, a little more finishing and cleaning. But this is a, this is, Again, one that hard to even find. And I'm a, again, I'm a millennial, so I Google everything. It's hard to even find this particular body style at all. And when it's when it, it's either one or two things: a full restoration, or it's eighty-five thousand, seventy-five thousand dollars that is sold for on an auction. Well, it, the reason for the prices being. 50, 60, 70,000, 80,000 dollars is because if you take a car like this that is in reasonable condition and complete, mm -hmm. you will spend 50, 60, 70,000 dollars restoring that car. Mm -hmm. So the value has to go up according to the investment. Right, the investment of the product. And because they are uh, rarer uh, all the time, I mean, every year. Fewer and fewer of them exist because right. they don't make them anymore. So it's a it's a uh, a great car, and when you think about the other manufacturers' cars that are going for such big dollars, mm -hmm. you see the Alpha as being uh, easy to justify that kind of price. I agree. I agree. This is Spider, right? This is the Duetto. Uh, and this is a restoration that we're finishing right now. This is beautiful. This is Bernard, you're, you're one of a kind. You are. Well, this, this, this is a story. This car came to me five years ago. And the guy called me. I knew who he was. And he said, I've got a, a duetto that I want you to restore. Mm -hmm. And I said, if it's red, I ain't going to touch it. <laughs> I'm tired of red cars. <laughs> he said, no, it's blue. And I said, oh, shit. That means i got to do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's, the, 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 the story is not a good story. Mm -hmm. um, we got the car. Sam Herrera is a very good friend of mine that does most of the hard mechanical stuff and he's doing everything on this car to finish it. Okay. What happened with this car was the Houston flooded. Oh. And in the Houston flood, he lost his house. Okay. Now the car was already here when, the, when it flooded okay. Houston. So the car didn't get involved in the flood. Mm -hmm. But two months after the flood, he passed away. Oh. And the car went to his son, and his son sold it to another one of their friends in Houston okay. who said, hey, I'll finish the car. Right. He took the car back to Houston and is a really, really, really good guy, an alpha guy, thoroughbred alpha guy, and, and, and really uh, I wish he would have done it because he would have done a beautiful job because he's done several of them. Mm -hmm. But he was not enamored of the blue color. Okay. He wanted another red one okay. like his daughter had. Okay. And so uh, he passed it on to someone else who said, oh, it's going to be a father-son project and they'll finish it. Right. Now, at the time that I gave them the car, it, it doesn't have a dash in it. It doesn't have uh, any of the bumpers or anything on it. It's a complete painted car, but um, they were going to do a father-son project to finish it. Well, okay. they looked at it and realized they were in over their head and called me <laughs> and I said no I don't need to do that car but they talked me into it they badgered me until I finally said okay because I got uh, okay from Sam uh -huh. 
to bring the car back and he would spend the time necessary to finish it and do it right. I mean, we, we can't do it any other way. You're going all through in and throughout, I mean, which is expected. Well, I mean, we're, we're painting under, right. the, under the nose inside the inside front nose area. I see. All of that yeah. repainted. Yes. It wasn't painted before. No. The area behind the windshield wiper area, that was not painted. So we've done all of that. And then these are the dash pieces right here hanging up that we just got through painting. Now, silly question. Is so, this, is this a, is their original, uh, uh, what do you call it, VIN, a VIN paint, a VIN number here? Or is this? Um, it, it's the original pieces um that were painted white okay and the bl a blue car with a white dash doesn't work okay somewhere along the line it got painted white the car was never anything but blue okay. so I, I know it wasn't original okay and it was kind of one of those things where we took on the project uh and we're now finishing it it's back and we're working on it and we've got about 40 hours in it since it's been back and probably another hundred hours to go to finish it. This is, but it's it'll be a really nice car. Everything is brand new mechanically, engine, transmission, suspension, brakes. Um, the bottom of the car is looks as good as the top of the car. Um, it really is a beautiful duetto. It is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely, cannot argue with that. And in this little space right here, I have done 12 restorations I was gonna of Alphas. I was going to ask you. I was like, and, and all of it is done here. This is where the magic happens. Well, everything but the paint. We don't do the paint. Okay. This paint is strictly taking care of what was not done by the original paint job that was done in Houston, okay. which that guy went out of business. Mm -hmm. Uh, two months after he picked up the car, they shut the doors. Now we know why. Okay. Their quality was not that good. Okay. This is a good car, but it's never going to be a 100-point Concours car. Okay. Uh, it'll be a 100-point Concours mechanically, mm -hmm. and the paint will be the holdup. Okay. Um, but, and it, it's a good paint job. It's a five-footer. Okay. So you could pretty much appreciate uh, everything about it until you get down to nitpicking. Right. And, you know, that's where Concours comes from, is right. nitpicking. <laughs> yeah, I watched enough of those shows. One of my favorite guys, he, he first thing he does is get in the car and he says, the seats are slightly overstuffed. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> the seats are slightly already, overstuffed. He already knows what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> seats are slightly overstuffed. So, no, I completely get it. License plate for my dealership. Mm -hmm. That's the dealership Alpha uh, Austin. license frames that I had a hundred of them made, and there's three of them left. So I was, hey, cause, yeah, because currently it's it's now Maxwell Fiat Alpha. Fiat, Alpha. Yeah, yeah. I, that's not. And then the one in San Antonio just closed down. Barrett of Barrett Alfa Romeo, Maserati Alfa Romeo, just went out of business about a month ago. So yeah. this was my dad's mm -hmm. on his desk and he was a colonel in the air force okay. and that's where probably the best choice of ha things in my life ever happened right. i joined the air force right. in 1960 and i knew how to turn the light switch on and that made the light come on beyond that i'm in complete darkness the air force took me 53 weeks mm -hmm of electronics training uh, so that I could become an air weather technician, work on radars Radar. and stuff like that. And then I, I knew everything about electricity right. and it was like, you know, it was a dark art right. before I started that. Yeah. And uh, I really appreciate that. There's many other features of being in the military that I really appreciate and that was going from Corsicana, Texas, mm -hmm. which was a city of 20,000 people. And I was in high school, graduated, going to junior college, and I went in the Air Force and a bath by fire. Mm -hmm. You find out 
what it's all about. Right. And as long as you are aware of what you're doing, right. it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's actually educational. Right. It's entertaining. I found people that I had never, people from New York City. Yeah, that's right. I'm from Corsicana, Texas, <laughs> and New York City. <laughs> and the, the people that you find teaches you the good stuff that happens that you're not even aware of outside of your own realm. Correct. And so I was, I, I felt like the Air Force was the best thing that ever happened to me because that also was where I found my first Julietta and probably would never have uh, gone on from there. Well, we're, we're about bridging gaps, right? You know, you and I would never cross paths. Probably if not. It, if it wasn't for this passion, this shared passion of, of Alpha Romeo. Uh, and so, and with that said, it better to cultivate a great relationship going forward and who knows where this could, you know, take us or, 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 or lead us down the road. It's about finding a, and if it doesn't take us anywhere, right? Like, well, we, exactly. we have, we have found something that we love and we're coming from two separate walks of life and they were coming together for one common purpose and then from it it just that's what life is about relationships exactly what and, it's and about. nothing is made done by coincidence nothing is done by oops automatically there's a purpose for every person that comes in and out of your life and and, and again when i saw you and met you and heard your story and and, and no one has a single bad thing to say about you I said, I have to have him on my channel. I have to get his story on tape. Um, I, it, uh, Angela scared me, really. She was like, you never know. Just every year someone goes away. And I was like, well, I got to get it. I got to get it. <laughs> and because, and, and, uh, and you know, a lot of times we have the, we put things on the back burner. And we say we're going to do things. And it's, life comes at you, right? But exactly. life comes and we, oh, I I was gonna like me. I was gonna write a book. I was gonna write a book. This YouTube channel, guys, was supposed to be started four years ago, and I'm just now getting it off the ground in 2020. Um, but better late than never. And I wanted to get this story for Mr. Fernal while he still can tell his own story about his passion for these cars and for others as well. We're gonna move to the front. We got some very special things for you. Um, you will see. You will see. All right.